হলো আমি এখন আমি এখন I am trying to do that just a minute. কোনটা মনিটার ল্যাপটপের ভলিউম ফুল আছে I have uh, switched off my mobile now uh, so that I don't get disturbed. So let me know if there are any issues uh, at this point of time. If you are able to see the presentation, uh, well and good. Can you hear the, pre- uh, can you see the presentation, what I am displaying? Okay, fine. Thank you. Because I have switched off my mobile phone. So, and also I have disconnected my landline connection so that I don't get disturbed during the lecture. Yeah. No, no problem. Thank you. Thanks. No problem. Oh, no, no, no. Yeah. Thank you. 
हेलो चिक चिक हेलो हेलो चिक वन टू हेलो हेलो चिक वन टू हेलो 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 हम आउट एवर
डे वन में से डे टू में तो नहीं Good morning, everyone. <coughs> On the behalf of organizing committee, I, Nilotpal Choudhury, welcome you all in the second day of Plamix Fiesta 2022. I am sure that all of you enjoyed yesterday's program and must be very excited to witness another set of events which are planned for today. In this session, we have one keynote talk followed by an invited talk and a contributory talk. I would like to invite Sri Shitendu Mondol, Chief Scientist, CSR, CGCRI, to come up on stage for chairing this session. Thank you, sir. Hello, huh. now it's fine. Okay, thank you, Nilatpal. Good morning to everyone. Yeah, today we are going to start the first technical session of today's event. As told by Nilatpal that we are having keynote talk, then invited talk, and then contributed. We have with us today Professor Ravi Kumar, Sir, am I audible? You are audible, I can hear you. Yeah, good morning, sir. Good morning, I can hear you. Yeah, okay, thank you, sir. So, uh, Welcome to this morning at CSR CGCRI and on behalf of director I welcome you and we are uh, really thankful to you for giving your kind consent to deliver the keynote talk for this very prestigious event on the auspicious occasion of the celebration of our research scholars day. So with this uh, we are going to start this program but as you know that you are a very uh, well known figure in the areas of science and technology and the title you have chosen is a really very hot topic at this point of time but it's customary to introduce you before the the students who are pursuing their research work in the different fields of science and technology rather diversified areas of science and technology at CGCRI. Uh, Dr. Ravi Kumar obtained his doctorate in natural sciences from the Max Planck Institute for Metals Research, Stuttgart, Germany in 2004. After six years at the Max Planck Institute, he moved to the Institute for Shock Physics in Pullman, USA and worked out on the dynamic response of bulk metallic glasses for a brief period. He joined then the Department of Metallurgical and Materials Engineering at IIT Madras in 2007 and currently he is a professor of ceramics and head of the Department of Metallurgical and Materials Engineering at IIT Madras. His research interests include development of novel non-metallic and inorganic materials whose properties can be tuned on an atomistic scale which includes the thermal management, catalysis and energy as well. He has been a visiting professor at various international universities, institutes to name few universities of Stuttgart, Germany, Shanghai Institute of Ceramics in China, European Membrane Institute, which is University of 
Montpellier, France, St. Petersburg University in Russia. He has been a recipient of several awards and honors, including the Institute Research and Development Award, IRDA, in 2015, and then Young Faculty Recognition Award, YFRA, 2012, from IIT Madras, Certificate of Distinction for Excellence in Teaching of University of Applied Sciences, Germany, 2013, Institution of Engineers in India, the Young Engineers Award in 2010, and Dr. Adil Thakur Memorial Award in 2008. Indian Ceramic Society. He has published more than 100 peer reviewed international papers and delivered several prestigious invited lectures across the globe. He is on the editorial board of Scientific Reports as an editor, Surface Innovations as an editor, Advances in Materials Science and Engineering, which is also an associate editor, and Frontiers in Materials for Ceramics of Glass. He is an review editor. With this, short introduction. I now request you, sir, to deliver your talk, which is on molecular precursor route to an architecturally designed technical ceramics. Over to you, sir. Yeah, very good morning. And thank you, Mr. Chairman, for uh, your uh, introduction. And uh, at the outset, let me also thank Dr. Uh, Krishna, Vamshi Krishna for uh, inviting me to this uh, event. So very good morning to uh, all of you once again and uh, the talk that I'm going to give today is about uh, how to design technical ceramics through molecular precursor route. Uh, I'm not sure how many of you are aware of it so I'll get started with uh, simple basics of uh, how we have been designing ceramic materials through precursor route. Uh, and even before I started with the technical part, I would like to acknowledge uh, my students uh, who have uh, contributed to what I have been able to accomplish as of now till date. We are heavily funded by Vikram Sarabhai Space Center uh, ISRO. So I would like to gratefully acknowledge the financial uh, funding from ISRO. The research focus of my lab uh, predominantly lies in uh, three different areas. We design ceramics for uh, security, that is, we design materials for the strategic sectors, for high temperature applications which can be used for both defense and space. We also have been designing materials for energy and environment. And for today's talk, I would skip the energy and environment aspect and focus more on what we have been doing in the area of ceramics that are used in the strategic sector. Since our aim is to produce ceramic materials uh, through precursor route, uh, we are designing materials from atomistic scale to microstructural scale. So that's the advantage that we have when we design materials through precursor route. Since this is a talk uh, which is also meant for young researchers, I I'm also taking this opportunity to uh, restrict my technical talk around 23 minutes and spend the next 7-8 minutes on uh, the uh, recent startup that we have incubated in the IIT Madras Research Park. Uh, just to give you an idea for the young researchers who may not know how uh, ceramics are produced to precursor route, uh, we start with molecular precursors. So we start with individual monomers, so it, uh, it's completely wet chemistry. So we convert uh, monomers uh, to polymers, ceramic polymers are then uh, shaped into various shapes depending on what we are interested in. And these uh, pre-ceramic polymers which are uh, organic polymers are then subsequently pyrolyzed at high temperatures where they are converted to inorganic amorphous ceramics. Of course, further heat treatment leads to stable crystalline phases. But since we start with individual monomer units, we have a lot of flexibility in, in designing materials at the atomistic scale. Just to give you an idea of the detail that we work with, all the polymer processing and so on happens well below 200 degrees Celsius. Any shaping that we need to do uh, shall be done uh, between 200 to 300 degrees Celsius and costing 
mm, also happens uh, in a temperature range of around 200 to 400 degrees Celsius. So once we have reduced the speed of polymers and passing them, we subject them to biolysis. The exact biolysis temperature can vary between 600 to 1200 or 1400 degrees Celsius, depending on the kind of high temperature. And it can again happen between 1200 to 1800 degrees Celsius, 2000 degrees Celsius, where we end up with stable crystalline phases. But the most important aspect that I would like, like to highlight here is that it is possible for us to design ceramic materials at, at very low temperatures. So low temperature ceramic process is what uh, is the key that I would like to focus here. It's a powder-free process, so we don't uh, do any sintering uh, of materials because we start with individual monover units, we start with precursors, so there is no question of powder. Uh, handling of powder, so it's a completely powder-free process. As I already emphasized, it's a low temperature processing uh, issue, and then we have excellent control on chemistry and microstructure. It's a highly interdisciplinary field where, uh, right from uh, chemistry to we start with, uh, chemistry to uh, go as uh, uh, to the level of uh, engineering uh, component, uh, which can be used in the industry. So it's highly interdisciplinary in nature. Just to give you an idea of how we can do this, uh, on the left hand side you see uh, the process, the schematic of the process, of uh, how we start with the typical monomer units. On the right hand side, I showed the microstructures to give you an idea of how we control the microstructures. At the top, you see a microstructure which is highly porous. So we are able to control capacities. Uh, uh, to make sure that uh, we can use it for specific functional applications. For example, we make highly porous ceramic materials uh, for catalytic applications. On the other hand, below here you can see high resolution transmission electron micrographs, where we show how materials can be uh, made high temperature resistant. For example, uh, the high resolution transmission electron micrograph, what I am showing you here, where you see silicon and silicon carbide and silicon nitride, which are in direct crystalline contact, you can see there's a perfect grain boundary here, a dry grain boundary here. And such a material which has silicon carbide and silicon nitride together, so such a composite is typically stable till, uh, till around 1500 degrees Celsius. Because silicon nitride starts decomposing beyond uh, a certain temperature. But in order to make this material stable, it is possible to introduce boron and then have an interface, like the way you see here, a thermostatic interface, which has boron power and nitrogen, which is at the interface of silicon carbide and silicon nitride. That can enhance the temperature limit to around as high as 2000 degrees Celsius. In the next two, three slides, I will show you how that is achieved. But the point that I'm trying to drive here is it is possible to not only control the uh, the final ceramic composition to, uh, at the atomistic scale, but also it's possible to control the, uh, the properties at the microstructure scale. Most of the work initially was done on silicon carbide and silicon nitrate ceramic materials. So most of this work was uh, done in the early 50s and late 50s where people were developing precursors for carbides and nitrates of silicon. And subsequently, the ternary, quaternary, and quinary compositions were developed predominantly for high temperature applications. And subsequently, uh, considering the fact that most of the non oxide materials are expensive, researchers in the field were also focusing on transition metal oxides um, incorporated in silicon oxycarbide matrices, which are relatively expensive to prepare, which could also be used for a high temperature. Just to set the uh, tone for this talk, I would like to just show this well-known process. In 1959, it was shown that uh, tetrachlorosilane can be used to make silicon nitrate by simple analysis. So this was published in Zeitschrift to an Anorganische Chemie in 1959. And uh, I think what drew people's attention was in 1975 when Yajima made silicon carbide fibers to polycarbosylene, which is uh, published which was published in 1975, but still remains a technological problem, and not many people are able to make silicon carbide fibers, and, but it has a huge 
market so with the starting point uh, let me get started so our group has been working on silicon based polymers so we initially started to work on uh, mostly uh, non oxide materials containing silicon carbon nitrogen and in recent times during the last 5 6 years we have been working on silicon oxycarbide and what kind of ceramic composition ultimately leads to depends on what goes into the backbone of the precursor and you can see that here for example we use uh, poly organic carbon state the uh, silicon carbide eventually if you start with silicon you end up with silicon oxycarbide and when you start with silicon so organosilyl carbodiamides you end up with get silicon carbide of course these precursors can be further modified to alter the compositions that's what we are doing both of structural and functional aspects This is an old work, but I still would like to emphasize this because, based on this concept, we have designed many materials for uh, functional applications, such as photocatalysis and electrocatalysis. So I, I would like to show this um, example, a particular example, which is con conceptually still very relevant. I explain this a few minutes back, but I'll repeat one second. This is a microstructure where you see a, a nanocomposite of silicon carbide and silicon nitride. Directly in line contract, pure grain bound. Of course, this has been produced through precursor route, and uh, whether you have additional free carbon or not depends on the functional groups attached to the polymer backbone. But such a material, whether to what extent it is thermally stable, depends on to what extent silicon nitride is stable. And as you see here, silicon nitride is stable in presence of free carbon till around less than. Around 1438 degrees Celsius, but beyond that temperature, silicon nitride is the presence of carbon to convert to silicon carbide in terms of nitrogen gas. So that is a problem because such a nano composite will start degrading in the presence of carbon beyond around 1500 degrees Celsius, and of course you cannot use them beyond 1800 degrees Celsius because silicon nitride itself starts dissociating into silicon and nitrogen. So one of the strategies was the Was done more than 20 years back. Was into boron into the silicon carbon nitrogen system, basically to reduce the carbon activity. And it was shown that uh, once you start introducing boron, you can make these materials highly stable till around 2000 degrees Celsius without any degradation. Because we know, and I already demonstrated in the previous slides, that silicon nitride is the phase that is going to degrade. And it, the strategy was to basically make sure that silicon nitride doesn't degrade. and the whole concept of making sure that silicon nitride doesn't degrade is to add boron and make sure that you form this thermostat boron carbon nitrogen phase what you see in the high resolution transmission electron micrograph here which basically protects the silicon nitride and make sure that it doesn't decompose and and therefore such a material system is is stable till 2000 degrees celsius and as you see from thermogravimetric analysis here you can see that it is quite stable beyond 2000 degrees celsius A schematic is shown here to just show that the degradation, which is primarily controlled by the the degradation of this material, which is primarily controlled by the degradation of silicon nitride, is prevented by this B and C phase. So thermodynamically, it would have actually predicted silicon nitride degradation, but you can see that microstructurally, we could see that such a degradation doesn't happen. So this, based on this concept, we have designed many materials and made. Materials which otherwise would have decomposed to be stable. Now let me switch gears and go to silicon oxycarbides. I am moving from non-oxide to an oxide uh, material. So silicon oxycarbides have been uh, being investigated for now, I think, close to 15 to 20 years, primarily because uh, it is relatively cheaper to make them, and uh, however they do have a very attractive uh, properties, and they have been now. Not only being used for structural uh, uh, properties, but uh, people have been using these materials for variety of uh, applications such as batteries, etc. And, so. and what we have been doing is uh, to modify these uh, siloxates by modifying it with uh, uh, precursors of transition metals. So we use uh, tetra and butoxide for transition metals, so that we in situ crystallize transition metal oxides in them. And make them thermally more stable, so that they can be stable till around 1800 degrees Celsius or 1900 degrees Celsius. Great for functional applications as well. And it it is also important to note that the ceramic yield is quite high in these. 
So what we have been doing is uh, we have incorporated zirconium, hafnium, vanadium, yttrium, titanium, and so on. And we have already investigated quite a bit uh, on uh, uh, in, in situ crystallizing transition metal oxides such as hafnium and zirconium and making them highly thermally stable. So currently we are working on uh, in situ crystallizing yttria, vanadium carbide, and so on to again use them for specific uh, structural applications. We have extensively already worked on uh, in situ crystallizing uh, titania in situ oxycarbide. And again, as I said, it is very much possible to uh, stabilize such metastable phases over a wide range of pressures and, and design it and fine tune it for functional applications. Just to give you an idea, in situ crystallized in silicon oxycarbonate active in visible wavelength, which otherwise it could not have been. Just to convince you how these uh, matrix look like. So on the left hand side, you see uh, such silicon oxycarbides which are modified with hafnium precursors where tetragonal hafnia are uh, in situ crystallized. And you can see from the X-ray diaphragm programs that till 1500 degrees Celsius, the material is quite stable with the uh, tetragonal phases still being stabilized. You can uh, know and you may know that uh, uh, tet having tetragonal phases in these materials is quite useful for us because stabilizing such a tetragonal phase will help me if there are any cracks that are formed in the material with when they are used for structural applications because uh, tetragonal to monoclinic transformation would help in uh, doing the fracture toughness of these materials. So, so as uh, you we demonstrate here, tetragonal half is stabilized at room temperature around 1400 degrees Celsius without a transformation. But even at 1500 100 degrees Celsius, we see partial transformation to, to, to a monoclinic phase. Uh, we have done uh, uh, some uh, fracture toughness study to find out what could be the fracture toughness in such uh, bulk uh, semi crystalline or partially crystalline materials uh, using crack opening displacements. And typically, they are in the order of around 1 MPA root meter, not very high. Uh, so, we never use these materials directly for structural applications. So, typically, they are used as mattresses uh, for uh, CMCs uh, so that you can use them for uh, structural applications. Uh, in recent times, we have uh, not been working with uh, the uh, Vikram Sarabhai Space Center. Uh, to provide um, ultra high temperature coatings uh, for their re entry vehicles. Um, and here we had to move from our comfort zone. We typically have been working on silicon based materials for the last 20 years. Uh, but, however, uh, due to a lot of um, practical limitations when you use them under very harsh conditions, silicon based materials are not very useful. And we were trying to work with ISTO uh, to develop completely non silicon. Uh, based non oxide based uh, materials uh, which are uh, based on the earth can be used for as coatings it can be um, safe till 2000 degrees and above so in this connection we have been working on uh, zirconium boron carbon system and incorporating them with uh, um, various rare earths such as lanthanum gadolinium dyscrosium and so on of course we have some initial results based on lanthanum which i'll go in, which i'm going to show it to you right now and we make sure that uh, a phase such as anthenum zirconate is formed, which is uh, uh, very useful for us because it uh, acts as oxidation barrier, uh, while the other uh, carbides and borides of zirconium, for instance, provide high temperature resistance. Uh, some of the preliminary results, what I'm showing you here, uh, demonstrate that these bits are quite stable. You can see that even at 1600 degrees Celsius, the material is still amorphous. Please note that our starting point is precursor, organic precursor, which converts into inorganic amorphous ceramic. So our idea is try to, to try to see and to make sure that the amorphous structure is made stable, as stable as possible at high temperature. So at, even at 1600 degrees Celsius, the material is predominantly X-ray amorphous. And uh, maybe if we uh, heat it at that temperature till around 15 uh, hours or 16 hours, you can see, start seeing uh, very small crystalline phases of uh, um, uh, borides of zirconium, uh, anthenum hexaboride, and so on, which are relevant for high temperature applications that, that do form. So, we have already been able to make such kind of phases, uh, such kind of materials which are quite stable. And the challenge was basically to, to make them in the coating, with a coating formulation. 
And uh, these are just high resolution transmission electron micrographs to show you how they are embedded in the matrix and, and how we make sure that these crystalline phases do not uh, grow and how brain growth is inhibited because of the surrounding constraining matter. We have already produced coating formulations and tried to coat these materials on stainless steel substrates, ceramic substrates and so on. Uh, the idea is that uh, we make these coatings without any bond coat. So we coat them with precursors and subsequently convert them into uh, amorphous ceramics. I'm just going to show you a video maybe that will help you understand better how we do this. So that was a video to show you how precursors are put on different materials and uh, how we convert them into ceramic materials. Uh, in the next two, three minutes, I'll just take, if I'm permitted, to show you about uh, the new uh, startup that we have incubated in the research park, which is called Saratatra, Inotech uh, Limited. Um, this is a purely ceramic material company. Um, it, uh, it has been founded by uh, my postdoc, who was working with me for the past three years and my PhD student Raghunath Sharma and um, Dr. Abha Bharti is, uh, uh, is also a chief uh, scientist who is uh, part of the company. And along with me, Professor Hari Kumar uh, also joins the team uh, who is the advisor for uh, material thermodynamics and uh, for providing calcite solutions. So this uh, company predominantly focuses on um, indigenizing uh, the precursors uh, which are hard to find, which are not commercially available. And our idea is to produce precursors uh, within the country and uh, supply it to mostly the strategic sectors of the country. Um, so uh, we have been doing this now. The, the company was uh, incubated a month back. And uh, apart from this, we also have an edutech component. We offer uh, technical solutions and consultancy services and lectures on um, thermodynamic, uh, thermodynamics and calfat solutions, uh, which is provided by Professor Hari Kumar. Uh, just to give you an example that uh, we have already been uh, producing such uh, precursors, customized precursor solutions. Uh, what you see in the picture here is a precursor for uh, making uh, UHTCs, uh, ultra high temperature ceramics, and again precursors for non-oxides. We made, uh, just to show you an example of a boron carbide ceramic block that was produced using uh, precursors. Uh, so the idea was basically to produce a variety of precursors which are very difficult to get uh, commercially. And uh, we are able to now make them um, uh, and commercially and supply to people. We have already been supplying uh, to academic institutions uh, uh, who are interested. And currently, we are uh, working with uh, Vikram Sarabhai Space Center uh, to see how some of these precursors can be uh, upscaled uh, with a high uh, uh, volumetric production so that we can supply them to uh, supply them supply to them in large quantities. Uh, and as I emphasize, these are not commercially available, which are under embargo. So therefore, uh, we stand uh, you know, uh, in a unique position to help the strategic sector. As a part of this uh, product portfolio, we have also recently developed an ultra spinner, which uh, can uh, produce polymeric and ceramic fibers. Uh, we, it works on centrifugal uh, fiber spinning um, uh, principle. It's a centrifugal fiber spinning uh, process. And it, uh, it competes with the electro spinning process because the fiber production rate is quite high. Uh, we can produce one gram per minute per nozzle. And we can control the diameter of the fibers and so on uh, by, uh, by suitable uh, 
um, uh, parametric changes. Applications in aerospace, defense, energy, electronics, filters, and textile sectors. The face mask, an essential accessory today, is made with polymer and ceramic mat fibers. Current manufacturing techniques are loaded with disadvantages such as limited material choices, unsafe operating conditions, and poor throughput. IIT Madras, an institute of eminence where innovation meets technology, has now incubated a first of its kind ceramic materials based startup, Sera Tatwa Inotech Private Limited, originating from the laboratory for high performance ceramics in the Department of Metallurgical and Material Engineering. Sera Tatwa brings into the market a centrifugal spinning unit, the first generation ultra spinner with a TR level of 9 that wipes off all problems in the existing traditional fiber spinning technologies. Meet the ultra spinner, India's first commercially available centrifugal spinning unit. Thousand times higher output than any other technology. User friendly and high voltage free, safe operating conditions. Integrated UV curing of fiber mats. Pre operation, easily tailorable fiber diameter and morphology. And ceramic fiber mats in a matter of minutes. The ultra spinner also handles advanced functional ceramic oxide fibers and polymer derived ceramic ideal to both industry and academia alike. Commodating and illuminating talk, very briefly pointing out uh, the material synthesis phenomena with the uh, different types of the uh, uh, products. And hear me? Yeah, I, it's very free, but can you please come very close to the... Uh, uh -huh, I think uh, we can give the podium. Computer? Okay, can you now? Yes, I can hear now, yes. Yeah, I request you to, if you can, turn on your camera, if possible, so that uh, we are starting the startup and what kind of uh, uh, challenges we often or normally face. This is uh, because you are an uh, uh, academician and then we here at CDC are also scientists. So from our side, also, as well as from students who some of you, some of them are uh, maybe planning to have a startup or something like that, in and, uh, and virtual money, ideas to products. So there was a one hour session where three of our uh, teams uh, pitched their uh, startup ideas. So if you can share uh, your uh, experiences with both of us, like faculty and also students, it would be a great. Uh, thank you, Dr. Vamshi. 